what's up everybody welcome to the workshop i'm luke with building with ken falk and today we're going to be going over one of my all-time favorite tools in fact most people that have done any amount of woodworking would say it's probably their favorite tool too uh really it's the whole world's favorite tool i don't get paid by craig so know that up front oh craig doesn't throw me no money he doesn't throw me no products i don't know why craig has to be a he maybe it's a she whatever but do know that I stand behind their products 100%. Never had a problem out of anything that I've used of theirs, but this is the one I use in almost every project that I make. In fact, if you go to any of our builds, you're gonna see that most all of our builds use the Craig. So the great thing is super affordable, under a hundred bucks. I'm gonna put a link down below. There's gonna be a link on the blog. Uh, so make sure you check that out so you can go purchase one. I mean, it'll be the best $100 you've ever spent in your shop. I can't overemphasize that enough. So we're gonna jump right into it. It's the Craig K4 system. This beauty right here. I mean, this one's dirty, but it still gets the job done. I've had this one for a long time um, and I love it. So, you know, you've bought one, but now you have to know how to use it. So let's look over some of the cool features. Now, first of all, a couple of things to know just so, you know, getting started, you understand where to start at. I think that was a repetitive sentence, but we're just gonna stick with it and keep on moving here. One of the great accessories they make for this is a little dust collector port. Now, you don't have to have a dust collector to use this. In fact, I actually have a shop bag that's hidden down underneath my workbench, and it pops up right here. And I've got a little adapter, and it pops right into that, and then, <coughs> I can put this on the back of my Craig. Talking about this first, because I think that having a clean shop is the most important part. And I'll show you in a minute the difference between using this and not using this and how much, uh, call it filth, you're gonna have on your workbench, okay? So really uh, awesome add-on right there. Highly recommend if you can find a package. And, and again, in the, in the links that I'll have below, you'll see that. Find a package that has this with it or grab this. I think it's an extra, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, I don't know. A little bit extra money. So we'll set it to the side for right now. Let's go over the main components of the Craig K4. First of all, we've got our clamp. This is what's gonna hold your wood to this area right here. Now, if you don't know what a pocket hole is to begin with, which is probably where we should have started, it's simply a way to join two pieces of wood to each other. So essentially what it does is if you have a piece of wood like this, and you want to join it to a, another piece of wood down here, it's gonna create a hole that goes at an angle just like that. In fact, I'll use a smaller bit to kind of represent. It'd go just like that. And your screw head would obviously stay in your top piece and join down to this, and it would hold it all together. Now, you can use, I've used all kinds of sizes of wood. Now, they say you can only go up to an inch and a half. Uh, what I learned a long time ago is I can actually fit a four by four in here if I take uh, this clamp all the way off and then set it up for an inch and a half here, which is all I would need anyways, because I would use two inch screws, but you'll understand that more in a minute. But that to be said, you can use a wide variety of wood. They say a half inch to one half inch is gonna be the sweet spot. So that's pocket hole. <clears throat> this right here, your clamp, it adjusts to different sizes. So depending on what kind of size you have, you can move that little nut down forward or backwards, and then you'll clamp it down. The reason we're clamping it to this is because this is the actual jig. So this is where you're actually going to be drilling. You've got three holes here. Uh, they're labeled A, B, and C. Uh, different widths apart. Most of the time what you're gonna see me using this on, uh, a lot is gonna be on two by fours, especially like aprons for tables and benches, things like that. Uh, and it's awesome because I can throw a two by four in here and use the two outside holes and it's perfect. But all said and done, a lot of different um, variations you can use here as far as their widths apart and everything like that. Now, if you notice on the jig itself, and I'll try to make sure you can see as much as I can, uh, but there's some little slotted holes that pop back. That is where your dust collector comes in. It pulls all your chips back through that, these little holes right here where it's being drilled. So that's why those are there. If they ever get clogged, you wanna make sure to clean those out. So. Understand this is the facing for our jig. So our clamp is gonna simply hold down our piece of wood against this. Now this has to be tight, because if not, when we go to screw down, it's gonna pop that board out and it's not gonna drill a good hole. So we wanna make sure this is tight. And uh, 
and, and not too tight. I, I wouldn't say kill it. You don't want to mess up your wood in the process, but tight enough to where it's not going to move on you. And then uh, this little plate right here, you can actually unscrew this and it moves up and down. In fact, you can take it all the way out. Now, I don't ever do this and I don't, so I can't speak to it a whole lot, but you can actually take this out and use this and clamp it if you're doing a project on the go or anything like that or somewhere in a hard to get area. Um, you can clamp this somewhere and drill you some pocket holes. I don't do that. A lot of people do. It's not me. Uh, on the side of it, uh, some of the Craigs, depending on what model you have, these may not be white. That was the one kind of downfall of these Craig jigs to begin with. And so you want to make sure that uh, if they're not white, get you some nail polish or something and fill them in. It'll just really help you be able to see uh, those measurements. Um, this one is printed on here. And so uh, you just got essentially what it's telling you or asking you is what is the board thickness you're working with. So uh, three quarter inch being the common one by material that people use. And then uh, I use one and three eighths inch for a one and a half inch board. The reason I do that is I found it one and a half inches setting it here at one and a half. I had a few more screws than I liked popping through, especially in softwood. And so Came down to one and three eighths. I solved all my problems. I still have tight joints. That's what matters at the end of the day. And so today, the examples I'm going to show you is going to be three quarter. So you're going to set this right here to three quarter. And then we'll screw it in here on the back just to make sure it stays tight. And you can see now that it is at three eighths inch. <clears throat> now, obviously, we're going to set our clamp next. So we'll put it on the table for this. We'll put our board in here. And if I closed it right now, as you can see, it's not going to grab. So we're going to extend that out where I feel like I have a good, perfect. That right there is not going to allow it. I'm going to move that nut down. That nut's just, oh, it's just holding it is all it's doing. It's keeping it from spinning around. Now I will tell you from time to time, depending on how quick you're moving, I'm pretty bad about this, is I'm moving this board as soon as I pull this clamp back. And what it's doing is actually spinning this a little bit. So it'll either loosen or tighten it. Um, and so you do have to keep an eye on, on not moving so fast that you do that because uh, otherwise you'll be readjusting that constantly. So we're in a good place here. We've got our Craig set up. You're ready to Craig your first board. Almost. One very important piece to all of this. Set this to the side. We have our bit. Now, uh, on these Craigs, it has a little spot and you'll get a little Allen key and it's going to fit right down under the handle. You'll see a slotted area right there. Now, I lose mine constantly. I keep one on all my magnetic strips because I can't ever find them. If I put them in there, they typically fall out um, just because I'm moving these around so much. And so I keep them on my magnetic strips all over the shop so that I always have one. On your bit here, you'll notice it's not just a regular bit. Uh, you're going to have this little tip on here. And essentially what's happening is this little tip is going to be uh, where the screw will go through and then where this tip ends and it's flat right there, that would be where the head of your screw is going to stop and then tighten down your joint, obviously. So you do have to have a specific bit for this. Make sure you keep a couple of extra. These tips can break off. Um, I've had it happen, you know, one o'clock in the morning when I'm trying to finish a project and I don't have any extras and there's nothing worse than that. So just go ahead and order you some. Again, you have links below. So this collar on here, it's very important on where this collar sits because if we think about it, <coughs> This collar right here is what stops our drill bit from going too far down. So let's say we have this set up at three quarter inches, but we have our collar way up here, and I'll show you the guides here in a second, but our collar is way up here, then it's gonna drill all the way through that piece of wood. And that's not what we wanna have happen. Uh, you could actually go into your jig if you're not careful. So you'll notice, <clears throat> which I guess that's gonna be upside down. So there you go, that's better. On each side of the clamp, you've got some measurements. Now those measurements are where you're supposed to set your bit to as far as um, doing your collar. So you'll notice there's a little catch up here. This is your collar catch. I just made that up, but I like it. So we're gonna call it the collar catch. Uh, and that's where your collar is gonna stick. And then remember that little flat area we were talking about? That right there is what I'm gonna line up with the mark of the corresponding width of the wood. So for three quarter inch, which is what this is set up for right now, if I were to stick this in here, you're gonna see that that little flat area above the tip is right at my three quarter inch mark. Now, if I were gonna do a two, uh, a two by four, which is gonna be an inch and a half thick board, 
I'm going to go ahead and use this Allen key, and I would loosen this collar. All it is is a little set screw right there. And then I would move this bit down to an inch and a half, and then I would tighten that back up. Okay, I'll try to show you best I can here. It's going to be a little bit harder sitting up. All right, so we've loosened that bit, that little set screw, and we're going to move this down. And now you can see that that flat spot is at an inch and a half. My collar is flush against that little collar stop, as I have now named that, I think is what I called it. I can't even remember anymore. That's what happens when you get old and have kids. Mostly you get old. But got it tightened back down. Now this would be set for an inch and a half. So we're going to redo that, go back to three quarter inch, and then I'm going to show you exactly how this works. It's so super easy. Like I said, guys, this is truly one of the best tools you'll have in your shop. So we're setting to three quarter inch, just like I showed you just now. I'm gonna tighten down this collar. Make sure that, that collar is tight. I have had a couple of disappointing moments where this collar wasn't tight and didn't realize it and it started to slide back and back and back and went to put a project together and all of my screws came through the other side of the wood and that's a sad day. So this is all very important. But it's all very simple once you kind of get your head wrapped around it. So we're set there. We're going to go ahead get our drill set up with this bit. And let's drill a pocket hole. Now I'm going to show you first and foremost the difference between using the dust collector and not. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to do two pocket holes. Um, and we'll, this doesn't matter. This is not going to be a project. It's just for uh, reference only. So. First, I'll do two pocket holes over here and then two over here and uh, two of those with dust collector and two of those without. So you can just see the difference just with two of these pocket holes. We'll turn it up. All right. So I clean it out. That right there is just two pocket holes. You can see on the bench here, um, not a huge mess, but if you're doing this, you know, if you're drilling 30 or 40 pocket holes, this is going to be a disaster. So we're going to throw this in the floor. I could walk over there and get my brush, but where's the fun in that? All right. So now that we have that done and we're going to clean out those little holes that it just stopped up on me. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Got those little dust collection holes cleared up. And it's going to get loud for a minute. I know y'all don't care. So it's no big deal. Sorry. I'll come back up in a second. I've got to get it plugged up. If we don't plug it up, it won't work. And the plug is hiding from me. I found it. I know you were worried. All right. Woo! Feel the power. Ah, oh, listen to it. Mm, that's the sound of it sucking everything in here into here. So here we go. The other cool thing about this is usually once you put it up to it, it's going to hold the wood. You still need to clamp, but it makes setting it a little easier. All right. It's set. Oh, did you see that? Look, there's no sawdust coming back through. Kick that off and take this off. All right, now, as far as it goes, we're gonna have the sawdust that comes out of the hole, a much cleaner area. That right there is why I recommend having a shop vac with a um, dust collector hookup because that makes a huge, huge difference. So you also got to see there exactly how we did that. Now let's talk about attaching wood to each other. Now we drilled four pocket holes here and we want to attach it just like this. Now, you can do this on a lot of different applications, a lot of different builds. Um, you can really get crazy doing some pocket hole joinery. Um, we're keeping it simple right now, just, just a nice little butt joint here. Um, and I've got my pocket hole bit. This is actually my Craig bit. Um, I use Craig screws and I use Craig bits. I know there's off brands of everything, but I've never had a problem with them. If I don't have a problem with them, I don't like to change it. So, that's simple. We'll pull this off and we'll put this on. Now on my blog, which is linked below if you're on YouTube right now, 
you're going to see a chart and that chart is going to tell you what size Craig screws to use with what size wood and what size, what kind of joint you're using. If you're going end to end like this with three quarter inch wood, I can use one and a half inch pocket hole screws. Now, if I'm doing a butt joint like this, then I can only use one and a quarter. It's important you look at that chart and you know that chart. You can always come back to my site for reference. Um, they also make a little uh, handheld chart. It's like five bucks you can hang in your shop. I've been doing it so long that I'm pretty good at knowing most of it. Every once in a while, I have to go reference it. But uh, we're going to use that size screw. And all you're going to do is screw down in those holes right there. And it'll go through and attach to your bottom piece. Guys, it is just that simple. Now, <clears throat> I would recommend using a clamp, especially when you first get started. Because what can happen a lot of times is if you're not using a clamp and you start doing this, and your wood pushes apart when that screw first hits it, and then as it tightens it, it's going to pull it up, okay? It's going to make your edges not line up. So you wanna make sure that this stays tight together whenever you're putting your screws in. That's very important. So if you don't, once you get going a little bit, uh, and you'll see me in all of my projects, I very rarely use a clamp anymore because I've gotten pretty comfortable with knowing how much pressure I need to put on it to make sure I don't have that issue. But um, at the end of the day, it's probably better to use a clamp um, hold it together and then get it all set and right. Uh, Craig does make another clamp that you can put in there and one side of it goes in an empty pocket hole or even a, I guess a full, but I don't know why you'd use it. So just the empty pocket hole that doesn't have a screw in there. Uh, it'll go in there and then clamp to your board on the other side uh, in case you don't have a long enough clamp. And so there are some pretty nifty tools. They make a ton of different accessories, so check that out. But you'd simply lay that down, put your screws in there, and screw them in. Now, the reason we have such a long bit is because you are at an angle. So when you're putting this in, I wouldn't be able to use just a short bit right here because it wouldn't reach all the way down to where my screw head's gonna hit, especially in a longer pocket hole, like, you know, for a two by four. Um, that pocket hole is gonna be a little bit longer than it would be on a three quarter inch board. So that's it. That's how you use the Craig K4. I'd love to know what you think about it. If you love it, Go ahead and throw me a thumbs up or a comment down below. If you don't like it or ever had problems, I'd love to hear about it because, you know, always learning. I think it's important, but I think most people love this tool. If you've got questions about it, drop those. I always try to get back to all my comments if I can. And so make sure you go ahead and drop those down below. I'd love to hear um, any of those questions, anything that I can help you with at all. If you're on my website, you can drop comments below, shoot me an email, whatever you want to do. Totally cool with it, guys. Make sure you share with your friends too because, you know, they need to know about the Craig K4 and how to use it and how to use it properly so that you don't end up ruining a project. Guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me here in the wood shop today. Make sure you're tagging and looking and sharing and doing all the things on the social medias. Y'all know how to do that. Everybody in the world says it at the end of the video, so I don't need to be repetitive. But I appreciate y'all being here and I'll see y'all next time here in the workshop with Building with Kinfolk.